Hello everybody, it's Diva Carla, the Cosmic Crone, and we are here for an extraordinary full moon divine feminine astrology reading. What makes it so extraordinary? Well, 29 days ago, in the first minutes of, or hours, of the sign of Aries, there was a full moon. Uh, the sun was in Aries, the full moon was in the first degree of Libra, and now here we are in the last degree of Aries. The sun is in Aries. The moon is in the last degree of Libra. This is an opposition of the sun and the moon, and that makes a full moon. So uh, that by itself, what does that, what does that mean? Uh, I'll tell you what it means. It means we are starting this astrological year with a triple dose of fire. We have the full moon in the first degree. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Hi, Rachel. Um, we have a full moon in the first degree. We're closing this first month, this first sign of the 2019 astrological new year, year uh, with a full moon in the last sign. And in between, there was a new moon. And they were all amazing. So... I'm here to do the reading, to tell you what's happening, especially with the Divine Feminine Planets. And it looks, sure, what, what have you got to say about that? What does it represent for you, Joy? I love Aries and what it represents. It is fire. It is youth. It is the fool in tarot. It is um, the, um, the initiate, the one who is beginning the journey full of piss and vinegar, full of, I've got this, I know this. Um, the one who has no freaking idea what's coming around the corner and yet is, um, there is a power. You know, yesterday in the Sex and Sovereignty Masterclass, we talked about the story of the Holy Grail and the Holy Grail at the patriarchal version of that story, um, only the knights who were pure, who had not been defiled by sex or by woman, uh, who were virgin knights, uh, were, had a hope of finding this sacred relic. And I just realized they were like the fool, the, the initiate on the quest, who's just beginning, who's starting out, because I don't know um, Galahad supposedly found the grail. We, we didn't go too far into that because in the quest for the grail, especially the real grail, which is the sacred feminine, the womb, the so-called innocence is lost. These boys, these virgins become men. That is the true meaning of the quest for the grail. Um, I, di I digress, but that's, that's Aries. We all begin the, the month of April into May, or March into April, sorry. Um, we all begin each year as initiates, new, fresh. So uh, what we've got going on, uh, I always look is what is happening the exact moment of the full moon? Uh, there is a triple trine, a grand air trine between Juno in the last degree of Gemini, the moon in the last degree of Libra, and black moon Lilith in the next to last degree of Aquarius. So what that symbolizes, the moon is emotions, and she is the grandmother. She is the ancient, old, feminine energy, and she is always watching over us. She is the one, uh, the, the elder crone spirit. And, and actually, she goes through all the cycles. She goes from maiden to mother to crone in the course of her 29-day cycle. But she, we, we refer to her in the, 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 my spiritual path as Grandmother Moon, and she 
holds all of that wisdom of our emotions, our feelings, the information we get when we are present in our bodies and we feel what we feel and we know what we know. And she is in the last degree of Libra, about ready to move, well, Okay, tomorrow morning at 7.14, no, 7.12 a.m. Eastern Time here in Maine is the full moon. So, um, you know, by breakfast time, by the time we finished our coffee, the moon will be in Scorpio. So she is carrying that relationship energy into the deep mystery of Scorpio um, well before the moon finishes, I mean, before the sun finishes in Aries. So, me, my phone was ringing. Uh, that, so that's the moon. And then that's at 2907, last degree of Libra. And trine that in the trine is the flow. It's where the energy is moving easily back and forth. And we have in the last degree of Gemini, Juno. Juno is the goddess of the sacred marriage. She stands for both the light and shadow energies of um, committed relationship. She also stands for social justice, money, the benefits and well-being of women and children. Um, she, she stands for taking a stand against patriarchy. Uh, she is married to the king of the gods, Jupiter. And they had a challenging relationship. And she stood, she stood up to him. She found her own power and she ultimately won his respect. And that is, that is where women are right now. We talked about this in Sex and Sovereignty, and in fact, we're dropping a little deeper. We're, we're tapping into Juno energy, and even more than that, we're tapping into Black Moon Lilith energy, and she is the third one on this grand trine, this grand air trine. She is still in Aquarius, the sign of the collective, and that is very much related to the energy of Juno, and that... Um, Black Moon Lilith is the universal feminine coming into form. I call her, I've, I've begun to think of her as pre-patriarchal feminine. The goddess before patriarchy is Black Moon Lilith. And that is the, uh, that's what we began to explore in the fourth part of the Sex and Sovereignty Masterclass is what would we be like before patriarchy if, if there were, if we could go back in time and be a woman before this conditioning and this system that we're currently living in, what would that be like? Who would we be? How would we act? What power would we have? And so we're, we're beginning a journey of finding that power. And Black Moon Lilith, all of the Liliths inform us on this journey. Black Moon Lilith, I believe, is our real guide. And I think Juno, with her much more uh, human type experience, she's She's been in the trenches of what it means to be a woman, as a mother, as a wife, as a one who has loved and also felt the darkest shadows of what it means to be in relationship with someone who is not good to you. Um, so these are, these are working together in a flow. And being in these last degrees... They really have all of the energy of the air signs gathered up. And this, I keep talking about the Sex and Sovereignty Masterclass, and you can find a link to join that if you haven't seen it. But um, through the entire period of Aries, we were doing those four sessions and exploring what it means to be a sovereign woman. And what is required? What do we need? What do we need that we don't have? What do we have that we don't know we have? And so we have gathered all of this air energy and I'm feeling tornado. And I'm also feeling um, my personal astrologer 
and astrology mentor Eric Francis talks about the last degree of Gemini as being, I think he calls it the 9-11 degree, um, 28-29 Gemini is often associated with big events, disasters. And I think we might be having some disasters regarding the well-being of women going on in our government. And tomorrow, tomorrow is the day, the next 12 hours is the time frame. Uh, I always say, choose power. There may be things coming in, there may be things taking shape. We can always choose how we will interact with that power, how we will meet that power. And so it could be that feminine rising as a tornado or a whirlpool, a huge vortex of feminine energy, waking up, gathering, that could be the disaster degree for patriarchy. What will it mean in your life? What will it mean to you? You get to choose. So that's going on. And, and it comes to, it's in place now, and it will continue in place. It's going to shift because the moon's going to shift right on out. Um, but certainly, Black Moon Lilith and Juno are going to be active together for a couple of days. And what else is going on? Well, this is actually a kite formation, which just means that all of these planetary energies are linking together. So the sun is in the last degree of Aries and also connecting to Juno and Black Moon Lilith. And another thing that we've got going on at that exact moment, they're not exactly in an aspect to each other because Vesta is in Aries and Albion is right next door in Taurus. There is a name for that aspect, but I don't even know what it is because I usually don't pay any attention to it. The reason I'm paying attention to it today is that they are both exactly at 7 degrees 29 minutes. So when, they're, when the numbers add up like that and line up like that, I, like, I just like to pay attention. What's going on with these two? Vesta, the goddess of fire, devotion here in Aries, really cranking up the energy of her sacred flame, her erotic energy, her, her, um, her power of sight and insight, her priestess power. And she is connected with the thresholder, the power of Albion, who is the one who oversees birth, death, and orgasm. These thresholds, these state changes, the entrance into life, the exit from life, and the transcendent moments of life, which that is what orgasm is the metaphor of, the symbol of. And so he, he used to be called QB1, and I liked him when he didn't have a name. I don't think he needed a name. But they recently named him Albion, and I, I don't even know what that means. And I don't think it, for me, it hasn't changed the meaning of this planet. Um, so I'm, I'm going to honor this energy because there is a, someone in my acquaintance who is actually in the process of passing. This may be the time frame that he chooses to leave. And I do know that I have, I have a dear friend who is... Uh, connecting with him, who is supporting him in this, who is being his final thresholder and escorting him out. And so Vesta is a, an incredible energy to have at this moment. And uh, if anyone else is having that experience or just completed that experience, you have support right now for this. And it could be that you are holding space for birth holding space for some other kind of transformation or holding space for a death. Uh, and this full moon has the energy for that. Um, we have still going on 
Pluto at 23 Capricorn in a square to Eris at 23 Aries. And these two are going to be dancing in the 23, 24 range for some time because Pluto is going to have a retrograde and Eris moves very, really slowly. I, I, I haven't looked in to see how long this aspect is active, um, but it is incredible. Eris, the goddess of discord. You know who I, I thought of as Eris in early days especially is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Do I have her name right? Yes, AOC. She and some of the other first term Congress people, especially the women, feel like Eris to me. They have come to bring discord to challenge the status quo, to challenge the way it's always been done, to challenge politics as usual, the tired old ideas that protect the interests of the patriarchy and, you know, don't give a crap about the people. So they're bringing some heiress energy into the picture and there are many other young people who are bringing heiress energy into uh, into our social equation and they will unbalance it. That's what they're supposed to do. And this is trying Pluto. So that is mature and serious transformation. Pluto knows full well that there's a lot that's ready to die and nothing new can be born until that old stuff dies. And he is in Capricorn, the sign of government, the sign of institutions. We just had the fire of Notre Dame Cathedral. And lots of people are having a lot to say about that, but just look at it as a symbol and a metaphor. Something, it, it riveted attention on symbols of the church, the institution, especially what got put into place during the medieval time. Now, Notre Dame is now, it is a cultural heritage site. It is a work of art. Uh, it is also built upon the sacred place, the sacred island to the feminine. It is Notre Dame, Our Lady. It is uh, a symbol of the Great Mother, regardless of the religion or the kinds of services that may or may not have been held there. And it's burning. And I saw many interpretations of that. Pluto. Pluto square Eris. And a fire sign, a fire aspect that I'm about to talk about. Um, it speaks, it speaks to the, the change that is happening, the energy that is unleashed, that is consumed and released by fire. What else is happening? There is an ongoing uh, conjunction in the sign of Sagittarius. It is the great attractor and Ceres. And this, this is so important right now it's also in the seventh house of this particular sign. That's kind of interesting. Um, Ceres is the earth. It is where we live. She is the goddess of our food, what we put into our bodies, what we take into ourselves, our souls, nourishment in all of its forms, but especially she relates to the fertility of the planet and how that sustains our lives and the relationship we have with that fertility. What role do human beings play? We once were, we once were the guardians of that fertility. We enacted that fertility in the sacred rite. We understood the role of sex, the role of the union of masculine and feminine, the role of the fertility of the animals and the plants and the soils and the forest the wild things and the cultivated things. We understood all of that in our role 
of life, living, health, well-being, balance, our placement, a relationship to nature. And so that is incredibly intimate. That is about being in a body, being on the planet. And the conjunction is with the great attractor, which is the biggest thing that we can we can't even identify. We don't know what it is. We just know where it is. It is at 1414 Sagittarius right now. What is the magic of that number? 1414. And it is drawing everything in our neighborhood of the universe. You know, probably 100,000 or more galaxies or 100 million. I don't even know. Everything is being pulled towards that, including us, and we don't know what it is, but we do know that it's there. It's vast. It's unknown. It's a mystery. And right now, the earth that we know intimately, even though we are forgetting that, we are also remembering it, is merging energies with this vastness this great feminine mystery that is 1414 Sagittarius. And so this has been going on throughout this moon cycle and will continue for a while longer before Ceres moves on. What else is going on right now? Ju um, yes, Jupiter is retrograde at 24 Pholus in a trine to Eris. So in a way, Jupiter in that trine, I believe he is amplifying and expanding this Eris energy we just talked about. It's, he's, it's, he's like, he's in Sagittarius, so he's contributing his fire to her fire. And he is retrograding, and I, his retrograde will go back all the way to the Great Attractor, or very close to it. So, uh, in a sense... He is also conjunct, this conjunction between Ceres and the Great Attractor. And that energy is going to be building. It, it, we've already had it once, his first time through. And now that he's in re retrograde, we're going to get it again. So this, in many ways, this is hang on to your hat energy. Um, and it's profoundly creative. And if you know where these things are happening in your own chart, you can really make good use of it. Um, I believe that everything in a chart has a positive impact. Uh, awareness makes all the difference, and it allows you to work with the energy to your highest good and to the highest good of life. It allows you to not be blindsided by shocks and surprises and to make good decisions and to be aware of where you need to pay close attention, to make a decision, to get off the pot, to open the door, to walk through, or to sit and go within and be still and listen. Any of these things could be the right action for you at any given moment. What else? Okay, that great attractor series conjunction is opposite Mars in Gemini. Gemini is another air sign. So we have the fire opposite the god of war, the masculine fire and focus of Mars. What does that mean, that opposition? It could stand to up for opposition to that energy, that merging energy of Earth and the great feminine void. It could also stand for a projection. It could also stand for a calling. One thing that we've been talking about, I, I put it in my group, the Womb Wisdom Portal. Um, the conversation is we want men to stand up, step up. Step the fuck up. That's, that's how it came out. So it could be that Ceres and the Great Attractor are standing there giving all of us women the voice to say to the masculine, step up. And yes, we're pissed off and we're angry and we're 
we've got a lot of energy about this because we're impatient because patriarchy is putting us back into the cage that it made for us and it doesn't care whether we die or not and we don't have time to fool around and we also are not going to come down and get you men we are here we are doing our work we are doing our healing we are holding our space we're doing what we have to do step up step up stand with women stand for the feminine it doesn't make you less of a man what did I say earlier the quest for the grail for the feminine is how this virgin boy becomes a real man a real knight it's not really who he can knock off his horse in his armor and his lance it's how he can kneel before the feminine and say how may I serve you lady I offer all that I have my virility my power my strength my skill my divinity to your service and adoration that's what we're calling for that's what this moon as we stare up at that silvery orb tonight and tomorrow night as we watch it set almost full when we wake up in the morning depending on where you live make that call inside yourself your inner masculine and feminine and send that call to the masculine embodied throughout the world I wish you a blessed full moon and I will see you next time thank you for being here